Hello, young scholars. This is Mr. Martyrone with your flip classroom on the transatlantic slave trade and the rise of capitalism. As the Colombian exchange grew stronger, the increase in global trade led to the developments of new economic theories. The first of these theories was called mercantilism. According to this theory, colonies existed only to enrich their home country. European colonists began to invest their money in cash crops, such as sugar and tobacco. The colonists sent to their home country raw materials needed for its industries. Products manufactured from the raw materials in the home country were then sold back to the colonies for a profit. And while in the home country, an increase in trade led to a rise in what is called capital. And this is where businesses use their profits to then generate revenue and employ workers to produce more manufactured goods to be sold. Remember, the goal of any business is to generate capital or a profit. As businesses generate more capital and profits, we see a rise in the middle class. We're going to see a rise in the middle class as they gain more political power. But we also see the emergence of a new economic system called capitalism. Unlike mercantilism, capitalism is an economic system where a country's economy is controlled by private companies, not the government, whose goal is to begin a business and generate profit. Their goal is not to enrich the mother country, but to enrich themselves. We see something called laissez-faire economics develop. And this very simply means let it be. Laissez-faire is a French word. It's a very important word, so make sure you underline it or bold it in your words. It means hands off or let it be. So what ends up happening as a result of the Columbian Exchange and the rise of the middle class, we see European countries letting private individuals develop their companies to buy and sell without much government intervention. And one item that is bought, sold, and traded over the Atlantic without much government interference is human cargo through the transatlantic slave trade. However, it was the transatlantic slave trade that wreaked the most havoc on African societies. Europeans initially forced indigenous people to do the hard labor of mining and farming, but European diseases wiped out large portions of these coerced laborers. During this time, Western European countries such as Portugal, Spain, and England were developing their naval technology. But Portugal was ahead of the others. In West Africa, during the latter part of the 1400s, Portuguese trading fleets arrived in the Kingdom of Congo seeking slaves. Initially, they took enslaved Africans back to Europe to work as domestic servants. But as early as 1526, the Portuguese began arriving in the Americas with slaves. This practice was eventually copied by the British, French, and the Dutch. Throughout the course of the slave trade, approximately 12.5 million Africans were taken from the coast of Africa to the Americas. African slaves soon became part of a complex global trading system called the Atlantic Trading System, or the Triangle Trade. One version of the Triangle Trade involved transportation of European manufactured goods, such as firearms, to West Africa. From there, enslaved Africans were shipped across the Atlantic to the Americas. The final leg involved the transportation of American tobacco, cotton, and other cash crops back to Europe. Plantation slavery and capitalism rose in the same period. We know that capitalism exists to make a profit, and people are investing money and expecting a return on their investment. Slavery was immensely profitable. People in Britain and elsewhere around the world invested in shares of slave trading companies and made a fortune. We also see that plantations that depended on enslaved people were also incredibly profitable. While on these plantations, cotton producing was the world's biggest growing industry in the 19th century. And since most cotton was produced by slaves, it was slavery that made industrialization possible. Therefore, the slave trade and the plantation system created profits for many capitalists around the world. Whatever their precise relationship, Clearly, slavery and capitalism existed together in the years that set the stage for the industrial and world economy we have today. Both contributed to the world we live in right now, and it's worth discussing and trying to understand how capitalism and slavery shaped our modern global economy.